evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. We will um, bring the Harris County Board of Commissioners meeting of June the, June the 18th to order. And um, we will have the invocation by Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Would you please join me in prayer and bow your heads? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our, the, our lives and the, the spiritual blessings that you bestow upon us. Uh, notwithstanding all the physical uh, amenities that we always enjoy, we should remember that that uh, your your physical blessings upon us and your uh, promise of, uh, of a Savior are, are the most important things. We pray that this that you will bless us more tonight as it deliberates the business of the county. We will pray for our president and our leaders of our country and all those that protect us not only on, on uh, foreign soil but protect us here in Harris County. <coughs> Uh, we pray that uh, everybody that uh, is, is here tonight will, will be uh, blessed by what this county does and what this board does. And we all leave, we pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Commissioner Andrews, please. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Next item on our agenda is the bid award Rails to Trails Phase 1. Randy, can I get you to do that? Yes, 
the bid award for road control is phase one. This has been a very long time coming. The county did purchase the abandoned rail line from uh, the Muskogee County line up to going north to the Meriwether County line back in 2008. Soon thereafter, the county applied for a federal transportation enhancement grant and did receive that half a million dollar grant. Um, it was, it's a federal grant. It had a lot of hoops to jump through, a lot of permitting processes and environment, environmental clearances to, to go through. But after 10 years of going through the permitting processes, the federal government makes you jump through, the federal funds have finally been released. And therefore, we went out for bid and last, last month, and we did get four bidders on May 20th. And phase one is from downtown Pine Mountain, Chipley Street, going to the intersection of State Route 18, 387, or D Street, right there at the country store. That's phase one. And that, the low bid came in at $561,221.08. The high bidder was $1,114,832.54. We are recommending that the low bidder, Southeastern Site Development from Newton, Georgia, receive this a bid award. Of the $561,221, the T grant, the federal T grant, will pay for 512473 portion of that, and the county will uh, have to uh, match the balance as is required by federal law. So basically, that's phase one. And we did receive, the county did receive two additional federal grants to continue from the intersection all the way down to somewhere behind the Mountain Creek Inn. So, and the two and the grants could not be combined. So we're going to have to go out for phase two of the grant very, very soon um, in order to make the project look seamless. Um, and all this should be finished by this fall. So, that's basically the project in a nutshell, and all these costs have been put in the upcoming budget beginning July 1st. Uh, Matt Smith with Carter Sloop Engineers, our consulting engineers on this project, is in attendance to respond to any questions the board may have. Make a motion to award the bid to Southeastern Site Development for $561,221.08 and to authorize the county manager to execute the contract. Right, and I'll second that. Is there any discussion or any questions? Has this company ever done it like a rail to trail before? They have. Uh, well, I'm they're a road contractor. Uh, they are working on the 219 project in the county right now. So this is a. Uh, small project for them. I mean, I just didn't want somebody to do that, but all of a sudden we'd have to turn around and go back and fix it or do no, that. So these, uh, all the contractors had to be DOT pre-qualified, -pre as will the contractors bidding on the next two phases. And so these have been met the DOT's stamp of approval. And we talked to the city of Pine Mountain Randy about the construction that's going to be going on in the middle of their town, in the middle of tourist season, and they understand and yes. they're working with us. Uh, I'm working hand in hand with Bayer Truck. We communicate almost on a almost weekly basis. He knows exactly what's happening tonight. He knows when projects are going to start. He knows exactly where it's going to start. And he's hit, and the Pine Mountain has offered to use some of their city facilities for storing and staging. So they have been working. We have worked with Pine Mountain hand in hand during this entire process. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. So is there is a motion and a second. To approve the bid to Southeastern Site Development. All those in favor? Okay, motion carries. Next on our agenda under new business is the financial statement for April 2019. Uh, is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. All right, there's a motion to second. Are there any questions? I'd just like to ask, uh, Clint, since we're 
this financial statement is April, and here we are in June. Is there anything that you are concerned about as we get to the end of the year? Uh, really, to be honest with you, like, again, this this uh, fiscal year 19 budget, our, you know, looking through here, the the revenues are essentially all in. If you look through here, most of them are over 100 yeah. percent um, for the most part. Interest looks really good. Um, really, if we go to the general fund departments, uh, the only spot that I see on here uh, may be community center, and that's a note that I put in here that that was more of a, a budgeting issue because of the pool had been closed down for three months. We based that off of that. And so it's making that number look a little bit tighter. But other than that, I mean, the, the department heads are well within all of their budgets on there. They've done an awesome job this year um, on that. We're, our, our splosts are all fully spent except for 14. That looks good. The projects that we have on here, I mean, really, it's there's nothing in here that, that is concerned at this point for the cycle statement. So, well, I make a motion to accept the financial statement as presented. Yeah, that should be the same. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, all those in favor? I wasn't here. Financial statement is approved. Okay, the next item on our agenda under new business is the Cherokee. Trail acceptance process. Um, the counties received a petition from 88% of the property owners on Cherokee Trail requesting that the county consider acceptance of the road. Of their eight property owners whose property is abut the road, seven have signed. Uh, Mike Brown, our public works director, has inspected the road, found that it meets all the criteria for road acceptance and it's in relatively good condition. The cost estimate regarding road work is a total estimated amount of $33,310. Um, per our road acceptance ordinance, the property owners will be responsible for the cost of the driveway pipe, the plant survey, and legal work. The recommendation of our public works director, my grant, is to accept the road for maintenance purposes only. And is there, we need a motion moving forward with the road acceptance process for maintenance purposes only. Is there a motion? This road is in my district. I'll make a motion that we accept it for maintenance purposes only. Okay, and I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay, motion carries. It is Okay, the next item is our EMC task order number three, the design permit and provide construction administration for Pitts Drive. And I'm going to ask Randy if he will give us the overview on that. Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners, uh, pitch, the paving of Pitts Drive, it is currently a dirt road. Um, it has been in the budget all year and it's also in the budget next year to pave this. 0.62 miles of road. Um, all the right of way has been acquired for this road except for a very small portion in the curve. It's a very, very tiny portion. Um, however, we want to get the pave, this paving project moving uh, using our available funds. That's in the budget. Um, so we contacted EMC Engineering, a company that the county has used before successfully for uh, design of pave, uh, paving projects in the past, such as Hardage Road and Washington Road. Um, EMC Engineering has submitted a proposal to design, permit, and provide construction administration for Pitch Drive. Um, during the design process, which is a lengthy process, um, the county attorney and the EMC folks can coordinate and acquire the remaining small portion of needed right of way during the design phase. And once the design is, once the project is designed and permitted, the project will be bid out and awarded. Again, this uh, paving of road is very lengthy. Um, the entire project should be completed in about 250 days for design, permitting, bidding, possible re uh, ut utility relocations, as well as construction, um, you know, weather permitting, and those sorts of things. Funding is in the, uh, the upcoming budget. 
65,000 for design and construction administration, and 850,000 to pave the road and install a water line. So that's a total cost of about $915,000. So basically we're recommending uh, the board approve task order number three for EMC to begin the design process and once this is designed, bid it out. Okay, thank you Randy. This road, Pitts Drive, is in the district that I represent. So I will make the motion that we approve EMC task order number three in the amount of $59,000. There's a motion and a second. Are there any questions or any discussion? Do we have any timeline on when we might even be able to begin? Um, design will begin tomorrow. Okay. And then I would say the 250 days would begin tomorrow. Okay, thank you. And then with weather permitting and right. all that stuff. Yeah, that's understood. Okay. And, and, Madam Chairman, according to the task force, the design will take about plus or minus 60 days. Okay. It's Thank in, you, in the task force. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Motion begins. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is our public hearing for budget FY19 and 20. Um, the, this is the second of two public hearings regarding the proposed budget. And the, in addition to the first public hearing on June 4th, we had four budget work sessions, May 7th, 21st, 28th, and May 3rd. At that, at that time, we heard from our department heads, uh, spent a lot of time talking with them about their needs, their wants. I uh, wish we could give them all their wants, but not possible. Um, the public hearing is open to anyone, I will open the public hearing in just a second, that uh, may wish to speak about the current budget, proposed budget. So we will open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of the budget? Okay. Hi, good evening. I am Kimberly Thorne, I'm President and CEO of Chamber of Commerce. Um, I know that there's been some discussion about the tourism portion of the budget and uh, presented a more detailed budget to y'all, uh, to Randy, uh, yesterday. I wanted to know if anyone has any questions. Anyone have any questions? Wonderful. Thank you so much. If I can take just a minute, I want to introduce my, my staff, my team, and their tourism sure. department, if you will. Dawn, uh, Megan, they're my staff. Um, my board chair, John Asbell, is here in support. Pam Bauer, she's my tourism chair. She's with Holloway Gardens. And Desmond Timmons is with uh, FDR State Park as well. So thank y'all very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor? Association. Um, Ms. Andrews, you had asked us to get in touch with Mr. Pope at uh, Diverse Power. I did so the very next day. Uh, he basically, a uh, very nice guy. Um, I worked with uh, his senior staking engineer, Brent Lawton, for a week, week and a half or whatnot. Anyway, they didn't really give me a reason, but basically all Diverse Power is going to be able to offer is just a meter basically just to run off of them and we would be responsible for hiring somebody else to come in and, and do the lights this that and that. So they did not offer a big proposal on doing lights. And I even asked them if they would give us one for new lights and um, uh, they, they didn't have any offer for us. So that's the only other offer I got. So the only other thing I have, of course, is the Georgia Power Estimate that you guys have. Um, I have not had time to reach out to, you know, anybody else to come in and work off of whatever their estimate may be from the first power. Um, but I do want you to know that I did go and uh, actively pursue that. Um, of course, I'm asking for you guys to consider 
uh, putting what we asked for into your budget this year. Um, you know, again, we're, we're willing to work with you guys. Um, we need, and even if it's not all of it, we need something. And uh, um, we, our numbers are up. Uh, just as an example, our select teams, we had two in the spring. Uh, after our only first tryouts, we've already got six teams coming into the fall. And that's just in that group of approximately number 20 to 25 to 30 recreational teams as well. So um, 6 o'clock gets dark really quick. We would really, really appreciate it if uh, we could work with you guys and um, get this done. If there's any questions y'all have for me, please feel free to go. I know, I know Rob's got questions. <laughs> no, I think we've questioned out. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? No one in opposition. Okay. So we'll close the public hearing. And if there's any discussion, any questions on the proposed budget, I'll go on. Madam Chairman, Board of Commissioners, you do have on in your agenda package all the changes that have been made from the original submittal. So if it's not in the original submittal and it's not here, it's not in the budget. Okay. Just making sure of that. Um, again, we're here to be, Clinton and I are here to answer any questions the board may have on the budget, make sure everybody's comfortable with approving this budget um, that has been discussed this far. Any cuts we have made, um, we can address those. Anything the board uh, wants to know, we'll be more than happy to entertain uh, any questions. Questions. Since we received the budget from the Chamber of Commerce, where are we on them getting the 20, 60000 for 2019? I know we've, we've been holding it until right. this. We're, we're closer than we were. Um, we have a current agreement in force um, with this hotel motel budget that appears to be compliant with state law in a sufficient detail for us to work with. Um, maybe just a few um, minor quarter reports, and we're done. So, um, so we're we're there. So they could get the sixty thousand for this year. Because um, I know this, when that's been held. Yeah. So what's that's been, what I'm asking myself. Are we at the point now where we're about ready to release the sixty thousand? Is it sixty? It's whatever's been collected from January first. To, to, to current, it, right? Whatever that is, yeah, right. So we are very close to releasing those funds because they have been, they have commit, uh, they have complied with the grant, with the grant, with the contract requirements. Say for you know a few quarter reports, but we can we can knock those out in a day or two. Right. So that still would be the five percent. That would be as budgeted and as the contract currently exists. Right. How long is that contract? It's an annual contract, renewable every every June 30th. It expires every June 30th. Do it. It can be it can't be canceled or renegotiated. We will give them the, the appropriate notice prior to the to the renewal date. Right, so the renewal date would be January 30th. What would no. the appropriate notice be? No, the renewal date uh, is on runs on a fiscal year basis as I understand. So You'll have to, this uh, March, April, you need to start thinking about it. I still have a problem with us giving the 5% when, by law, we can keep part of it for the county to help the county. You know, and that's part of, you know, I do know the city of Pine Mountain keeps part of their hotel motel tax. It's nothing I have against the Chamber of Commerce because I think they do a good job. But I also know that the county, you know, some of that money we could use for our purposes that we need to help the people of the county. So if we were going to change that where they got 3% and say we kept 2%, what would we have to do to have that happen? We have to give them notice of the next year when the contract comes around this time, you know, negotiate with the 
turn out the contract and agree to go through. So this is the first year that they've got the five percent versus the three percent. It started January first. January first. And the contract ran from January first to July one, and then uh, it will self renew July one until June thirty of next year. It runs on a fiscal year basis, and that's the reason we ran it only six months or so that we get on a fiscal year basis the same as the county. And just to clarify. Uh, what Commissioner Grant is referring to is those funds that the county uh, can keep, elects to keep, whether it's 10 percent, 3 percent, whatever, does go into the general fund and there are no restrictions on how that money is spent. It's, as long as it's spent for any legal purpose, it can go into the general fund. But for this upcoming budget that we have for the upcoming year, we have to leave it at five. Well, that's my understanding. Yes. Because they, they have complied right. recently right. with the contract requirements. But as you said recently, they were actually a month late on when the budget was supposed to be in. The budget should have been put in in early May. Right. All right. Well, I, I don't have a problem with it this year, but I think we need to see a little more and better. Uh, advertising and things that and more on the monthly reports that you're talking about, more on the budget of how they're going to actually promote FDR, how they're going to promote everything for hotel motel tax. I think, you know, that may, I don't know if you, if, if the county manager, somebody needs to stay on top of that with them, but I think we need to do a better job of that. Because I do know that FDR would like a billboard, and I see on, uh, out on the interstate, and I see on the budget, you know, it's a wish list. Well, if we're supposed to spend money back advertising FDR Park, which happens to be the largest park in the state of Georgia, then I don't think the billboard is going to wish list. I think the billboard should be on the, that should be a priority if that's what we're supposed to do to promote that park. And if it was up to me, we'd do like two or three billboards. We'd put one coming in from Tennessee, one coming in from Florida, about Austin, maybe one over in South Carolina. And advertise. you don't want to put one out here by us, because we all know what we got. We want to get everybody else to come in here. I don't know about y'all, I actually, I, I happen to like our park. I think it's one of the best ones around. You know, I just think we need to stay on top of this more and maybe look at this 5% going into the next year if at this moment in time we can't change it. All right. Any other items on the budget? I think we do need to discuss the summer proposal. If we want to do if we want to do anything like that or there's is there any are there any comments on that? Sure. Okay. All right. Um, 
the thing about it is we are we are going to have a salary study. And we're gonna to have to deal with in February. It begins in February. It begins in February, which will be finished about the time for our budget talks for next year. So we're gonna to have to deal with that too. So I don't know um, I don't know how we're gonna deal with that. And I don't know we have no idea what the cost will be. But that those are just my comments on this. So are there any other issues? In the, in the meeting we had earlier, that is that's, a, that's just a big issue that will impact this current budget that none of that exactly. cost is in here, and it's a real concern. Yes, it is, and I agree with you on that. There is another issue that we're not really at liberty to discuss at the moment that we're on, that we're going to have to take into consideration. Well, then let me ask you this. Our cable fee, if we went up to what the law told us we could do, up from 2% or 3%, where are we at, 2? Two? Two, 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 two and a half. If we went up to 5%, which is what the law says we can do, and I know most of our cities in the county have already done that, and I believe we're the only county that did not do it. I think we're one of the two, one of the two, two counties that in the entire city of Georgia does that 2% and at the maximum 5. All right. If we went up to 5, which we're legally able to do, well, do we think that might generate in an extra, say, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars, somewhere in there, that we could actually turn around and take that money, that would allow us to have this leeway for these soccer lights? The full five percent on the cable franchise fee would generate one hundred twenty thousand more. So we're at about eighty thousand at the two percent in this current year. That would put us up to two hundred thousand dollars at the full five percent. So if we did that, that might add up, that would add in enough money where I would feel comfortable putting these soccer lights in this budget knowing if we're going to do that. <coughs> because the law, the state, you know, says that we're able to do that. And then if we're doing that, then hopefully the people would understand, since most of our cities already have gone up to 5%, they'd understand that one of the things we're doing it's okay, we might have gone up, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and put it right back in that soccer complex, and your kids are going to be the ones benefiting playing there, if you have kids, or if you just want to walk around the trail, or whatever the case may be. I mean, I could, if we can do that, then I could see putting those soccer lights in. I would suggest this, if you're going to do that, do that first, and then come back and amend your budget. Yes. During the yes. Right. We have to vote to do that. Right. Yeah. But now, like you know, the, the cable TV franchise fee going from two percent to five percent, that's there might be a time lag. Right. Because you have to we we have to renegotiate all the franchise agreements we currently have if they haven't already expired to have the franchisees go from two to five percent. So that's going to take a while to go through that process. But those companies out there, like the Georgia Municipal Association, that for a small fee will do that for us, probably for much quicker. So that, that is an option. And in the 2% to 5%, that goes on every year. It's right. not a one-time right. shot. Right. It keeps on giving. Right. And, on the, and just, just for clarification, when I mentioned the public-private partnership on the soccer lines, the Soccer Association, on their own, was able to obtain the lights from Double Boy Stadium out of Fort Bend at no cost. And they came to us and asked us if we would be willing to partner in having those lights um, erected out of the soccer field. They also have agreed that they will pay a portion of the cost. So there are a lot of things that still need to be worked out. Uh, there are a lot of there are agreements that need to be done if we put that in the, if we put that in the budget. But first, I like the idea on the cable fee, and if there's a consensus to do that, then we would have to vote that vote for that, and then come back and as you say, amend the budget. And I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Anything else on the budget? It's 
there anything we've forgotten, Randy, that you can think of? <coughs> that we may, no, that we may need to address that we had open. Those are open items, but I can't think of any. Anyway. All right. The next item on the agenda is the budget. Did you take a vote? No, it's being done now. That's what I'm going to do now. Okay. okay. That's what I'm going to do now. Um, the adoption, the resolution for the adoption of the FY19 and 20 budget. Um, our 19 and 20 budget includes our general funds, special revenue funds, capital project funds, debt service fund, enterprise funds, which is the airport solid waste and waterworks. And um, we need a motion. We approve this. We will be able to come back and amend in the budget. Yeah. We can't do that. You need to talk in the year. Yeah. I think so far this fiscal year that's going to end in about two weeks, we have about eight or nine budget amendments. So so with eight or nine budget amendments, that's very, very few, which is indicative of a good budget. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, any other questions? I will I have I will say this. Um, I still have questions. I still have issues with our budget. Probably that's because I'm a new person and I'm just you know, we're just going through this process and I'm trying to get my head right around some of it. I still do have some issues and questions and problems, but that could just be me. <laughs> uh, but that being said, I do believe that we have done a very good job of going over this budget as much as we could at all our meetings, even with the, maybe some questions and issues that I have. Uh, so I appreciate y'all uh, being willing to listen to my questions and comments about what I'm trying to do here. All right, there is a motion to adopt the budget in a second. All those in favor? Okay. Madam Chairman, we'll pass the time for our public hearing. Oh, we sure have, Nancy. Thank you. I'm so All right. We have a public hearing on the proposed uh, PRD to amend the zoning ordinance. We'll have the public hearing where anyone is able to speak in, um, on, the, on, their, on the post PRD and the application. This is this was table from our June <coughs> fourth meeting. Uh, the first hearing was held by the Planning Commission on May 15th, 2019, and there is one change. That I will read and then I will open the public hearing. There was one change that reads All PRD lots shall have public water and public sewer. All PRD lots shall have public, oh, excuse me, no safety tanks permitted. Developers shall be responsible for all costs to connect to public water and public sewer, regardless of political boundaries, to include all taps fire plugs in Maine, as well as the cost for any property or easement acquisition. Um, so I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of the PRD, the proposed change of bill? No one would like to speak in favor. Anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Okay, and I will 
Number 15 is still being reviewed by the county attorney, the day saws rewrite of the stream, that project. Number 16, the monument sign at the business park has been installed, and the, we're waiting for the veneer base of stone to be laid. Number 17, clearing the ground 35 acres of the business park. That is on bid. The, bid, the pre bid meeting is June the 27th, pre, uh, the bid opening is July the 9th. And the board consideration should be July the 16th. And number 18, the chipping and grinding of Elgin Park, that project should begin very soon and last for about 90 days. And all the other projects have been completed. And on the next meeting on July the 8th, so next Monday, July the Monday, July the 8th is the next meeting, um, due to the July 4th holiday schedule. So the next meeting on Monday, July the 8th, we'll, you'll see a new program of work of all the items contained in the approved budget. That's it. Anybody have any questions? I have one quick question for you. Um, when I was reading with the uh, forestry motion of that 35 acres, I think we're requiring that everyone to do a bid bond. To be bonded. A bid bond. A bid bond? Yeah. Yes, we're, we're requiring to do a bid bond. Yes. Is that typically required on that small little job? Like $50,000. Is it, do we, is it, it seems like it's going to add an additional cost. It's a guarantee. Right. We have a very right. small risk and a very small job. I mean, that's just right. But, now, now, but we're not requiring a performance of payment bonds. Okay. That's only requiring projects for $100,000. Okay. So we're not even going to require that because it's a small project. But a bid bond makes sure whoever the, the successful bidder is to make sure they follow through with the work and they don't run away from us. So, it, so we do that at any cost? We, we, no we typically do that on every bid, don't we, Nancy? Because we don't have, yeah, everything's over. So we, we typically do a bid bond on everything just to make sure the successful bidder follows through, signs the contract, and begins work. Because if they run away from the bid, then if we don't have a bid bond, then the county is out all that work and effort, and we have to go and do it again. But if they give us a bid bond, um, to protect our bid process, and if they run away, we can cash that bond in and have those funds available to go and do the rebid the project at their expense, not ours. But we are not requiring a performance payment right. bond. Okay. Okay. Mr. Taylor. 
Yes, ma'am. I have uh, one item on here, and this is the first reading of the ordinance to rescind the Mulberry Grove Special Tax District uh, Ordinance. Back in 2003, uh, we adopted an ordinance uh, to create a special tax district for the Mulberry Grove, which is a, a development in the south uh, part of the county, uh, uh, just north of uh, 185, just north of the county. Uh, County line. Uh, and the, uh, the bonds were issued in, in order for uh, the uh, developer to um, install a sewer line from Muscogee County up to the, uh, to the uh, project site. Uh, and we had a, uh, in order to make sure that they paid the bonds, we created a special tax district, which uh, you're allowed to do by law. And that uh, special tax district was for that the, the development area only. Uh, and now that the bonds have been paid back uh, in full, there's no need to uh, have a special tax district uh, for that uh, particular project. And what this will do will repeal section 6.173 uh, uh, of the uh, Mulberry Grove special uh, uh, the Mulberry Grove uh, ordinance. And uh, and after. If, it's, if you go forward on the next uh, after the next meeting, it, that section only will be repealed, and this will be the first reading of the ordinance. All right, thank you. And this is the first reading and the second reading, and both will be scheduled for July the 8th. Is there? Does anyone have anything else? No. Is there? There's no need for executive session. No. Okay. Right. What would we need to bring up? Is Cable tax franchise fee so that we can vote that. We start next, 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 next meeting. Yeah. At least give you an update <coughs> on the progress. Right. But it, it, it's, it, that whole statute then is, is convoluted. It's a mess. Okay.